you obviously spent your youth career um, at Leeds, winning the Youth Cup, I think that was 1997. Yeah. And then yeah. it was um, in 2004 is when the yeah. Leeds fans um, were informed that you were making the move to Manchester United. Obviously, that's been documented well over the years. But tell us yeah. what that was like for you. Um, it, it was an interesting time, obviously. A difficult time, only based on the fact that Leeds had been relegated. Yeah, um, I think was, you were crying were the on biggest, the pitch, weren't you? Before on the last, yeah, I think it's been shown season. a few times since I got yeah. promoted. Yeah, just bring embarrassing me. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'll right. we'll not show the pictures. <laughs> well, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't really care. I I loved playing for Leeds. It was my boyhood club, and like I said, I was gutted. Simple, simple as that. And you can't hold back your emotions if it if it means so yeah. much to you. Um, mm. And. Like I said, the decision, or if it has to be a decision to sign for Manchester United, it's like like you say, it's been well documented, the Leeds-Man United rivalry, but 16 years on is the first time they're going to play each other in a real mm-hmm. competitive game other than a few FA Cups or Carling Cup ties. So for me, it wasn't even a rivalry anymore. If you're not in the same league as someone, I don't really see how mm-hmm. it can be a rivalry. And... You'd be doing yourself a disservice, I think, if you took the easy option and didn't sign for, arguably at that time, the biggest club in the world. Um, mm. And for me... Can you remember the, can you remember the build-up to that, Al? To how you actually it? found out? Well, to for, how you found out? Um, I spoke to Sir Alex on the FA Cup final day when they were playing Millwall um, about signing. Down at, down at Wembley? So you, United were at Wembley Cardiff, playing Millwall... It? Kind of, sorry, yeah. United were playing Millwall on the Saturday and I was I was at home and he ran. Did you know that was going to happen? Uh, no, no, no. There'd <laughs> been talk of me signing in January and I spoke to Sir Alex in January about it and said I couldn't leave in January just because I wanted to try and keep Leeds up. That was... Mm-hmm. And they went and they signed Lewis Saha from Fulham. So I just thought, dead and buried, That's obviously, good. like... They won't want me because they've signed Lewis, so which were fair enough. Um, and he was on fire at time, and as I say, such a great player. He probably could still play now if he wanted to. Um, and so I didn't really think much about it, to be honest. I just continued batting on, trying to do as best I could to try and keep Leeds up. Fortunately, we didn't. And then there were talk of other clubs being interested, and I never spoke to any other club about going there. The club had told me they were interested from Newcastle and. Middlesbrough and a few Everton and a few other clubs, Liverpool. And it was just, I think Liverpool had just, they didn't have a manager at the time. I think Rafa Benitez had just left or he was just coming in. Um, and then, as I say, Sir Alex ran. And I made my decision there and then, basically, without consulting anybody else. Uh, because, You're just like, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think at times like that, though, and I've never been it's a selfish an person in terms yeah. of where I've played and stuff like that. I'd always sacrifice, sacrifice myself for everybody else. And I thought, I've got to do the right thing for me. Um, through disappointment, and like you say, it wasn't through lack of effort or commitment. It was just, it was through we weren't good enough to stay up. And at the end of the day, it's a case of other players had left um, the season before on free transfers and gone elsewhere. And I was probably one of only... a th- two or three who were still left at the club that had been there previously and there were a lot spoke about the club in terms of the financial stuff and I don't really like to go into that because I don't want to make any excuse for signing for Man United because at the end of the day that were total football based decision from my point of view Mm -hmm. from the club's point of view it was more of a financial decision in terms of the destination for me so I think it all lined up perfectly you're uh, proper debut, I guess, was the Charity Shield. Yes, my yeah. Well, yeah. Is it a friendly or is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But it, it's sort of half counts, isn't it? But you, yeah. uh, we lost, but you scored. And yeah, what was that like? How did that feel? Well, it wasn't really great because we got beat. But in terms of like to get off to a good start, it's always always nice at a new club, um, and. But I think when you go into Man United, I remember speaking to the manager at the time and I don't think he was really bothered about the goal ratio. He was more bothered about like getting back to winning in terms of if you're a player at Man United and you're scoring, if we're not winning, then 
collectively we're not we're not doing what we should do. And I think that I think when I first signed, he alluded back to Mark Hughes a few times in saying he'd only get us 10, 12 goals a season, but they were always important. And the job that he did for the team were more vital than just his goals. I think that's something that always stuck with me about in terms of defending from the front, obviously back to goal, bringing other people in, which his demands that, as I say, makes you a better player. It demands that make sure that your first thought is, listen, I've got to get out of this ball and bring someone else into play. Not always about, oh, what's my goal output? So, like I say, it was nice to get off to a goal against Arsenal, but the defeat made it a little bit, a little bit more difficult. I think some of the some of the play you've just talked about. I mean, when you were at Leeds, fans loved it, and equally so when you were at United. Did you enjoy being like a fan's favourite? Did you feel like you had that kind of relationship with the fans? Because often new signings at United, there's a lot of players that people already love. So maybe it takes a bit of time before people start paying too much attention to what you're doing because they're already so invested in somebody else. But people seem to take you to their heart straight away. I, th- I think like I spoke about early on, though, I think there's a way that certain players come across. Carlos Tevez is a prime example of his work rate. Wayne Rooney is another prime example of a forward player who, like, plays with that intensity. And we speak about passion and stuff like that. I think intensity is a great word for, like, what fans want to see. Whether that's coming on for 15 minutes, starting a game, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Like, and I always say about how effective are you? Not about how many skills you've got. How how effective are you in a game? Um, And how can you put that, put yourself into a game situation to make yourself effective. And I think that from a striker's point of view, and Maisie will tell you from a defender's point of view, there's no worse if you're charging stuff down all the time and making it so difficult for to defend and not giving them any breathers. Tackling from front helps everybody in your team as well. And I think that that endears you to fans because sometimes they don't expect that. I think people think about signing for a big, big club and think about someone who needs all the skills dribbling around people doing that but I think playing for Man United as I spoke about is very similar to what the demands were at Leeds in terms of the fans want to see you run through a brick wall for them for anyone maybe some people that are younger that are listening so we're playing Liverpool it's 2006 John Arnarisa lines up a free kick and the result of that is uh, what Alex Ferguson calls one of the worst injuries he's ever seen yeah for you, did you immediately know, like, had you realised the damage that had been caused? Did you know this is going to be, this is serious? Or was it just like, well, this is uncomfortable? It was strange, really, because it's like you're just going, to, your body just takes over, you're going to shock, you're not really thinking about what's going to happen in the future. My biggest concern was that I was going to lose my foot. And I remember, the only bit I remember of it is like, it's all a bit of a blur. And I remember in ambulance going to hospital and doctor saying to, um, to our doc at the time Doc Stone saying we need to get blood flow to his foot and I'm thinking that does not sound great I'm no doctor but having to get blood flow to (laughs) someone's foot I could have gone from being a professional footballer one day to having no foot next day which is quite a worrying thought Um, and it was something that I had to come to terms with very quickly that I'd never get back to the levels that I was at previously and I I pretty much knew that straight away just because of when I'd spoke to people like the Sunday and the Monday. People's and reactions, f- yeah, yeah. Yeah, and because you're in hospital for a long period of time and you're having two and three surgeries and you're thinking... What did that what, 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 what was the actual extent of the injury? So I did my tib, my fib and dislocated my ankle. And I was lucky that I didn't compound so it didn't come out of the skin. Yeah. The actual... The dislocation of the ankle were obviously the worst thing out of it all because I remember we had to get a hand surgeon to do the surgery on my ankle just because there's so many like complications with like getting it back in place, the distance between your Achilles and all that kind of stuff. And basically, I ended up with probably 50, probably 60% like movement in my ankle in comparison to what it should be. Um, and once someone tells you that and goes, this is how long it's going to be, this is the process, you get your head around it because you're going, right, 
I've got 12 months to get to this stage. Targets. And you just yeah. you approach it head on. And like you said, we've always been people who had a structure and had, we know what we're doing mm-hmm. day in, day out. And like, you need that in your life and it becomes difficult when you've not got that. And I think that for me, getting back to some sort of level was was a big thing. And I, I knew I'd never get back to the levels that I were at previously. And that's why, like, it becomes such a difficult conversation because it's one when I knew I had to leave. I played last 10, 12 games and you come back and you're on a high, you play against Roma and et cetera, et cetera, and you, you're getting by on adrenaline, mate. It's like you're flying on adrenaline, but when you're going home at night, you're thinking, this is not like, this is not how I was before. Do you know what I mean? It's like everything's so much more difficult to do. Like even, mm. even the simple stuff, striking with a ball with a left foot, it's like, can't really do it. Like, you've got no power in it. You've got no confidence in it. And you end up, like, mentally, you get everything back that, like, my ankle's strong, but I've not got the flexibility of it to turn, to push off. So you start to realise, initially, it was all right. I came back, scored against Roma. It's like, oh, yeah, great. But then the games after, when you play Middlesbrough at home and you can't do stuff that you really want to do, you start thinking, I'm miles off it. Mm. And there's that horrible realisation that if you're 1% off it at Man United, you're probably gone. Like, if you're 10, 12, yeah. 15% off it, which I obviously was, you're in a different world. 